Hello fellow travelers, my name is SG and welcome to the channel. Today I thought we'd do a review of a series that is very near and dear to my heart. We're going to do a review of Ed and Eddie's The Big Picture Show. And the reason I'm doing this is because last weekend it was the anniversary of the first episode of Ed and Eddie when it first aired on Cartoon Network. So I thought uh, this is as good a chance as any to actually do The Big Picture Show. And uh, yeah, so let's get started, shall we? Already, Ed and Eddie The Big Picture Show opens up in a way that no one really expected. We opened with Ed, Ed, and Eddie um, basically being terrified of them feeling guilty. Double D especially feeling guilty because he claims that he did something really bad. And we can see the destruction, the chaos that happened from one of their scams, they call it. And it's all about how they did something really bad to everyone in the call set except for Sarah and Jimmy. They never explain what happened and I think that's done on purpose to keep the mystery alive to kind of put it together yourself because if we look at the scenery we can kind of see that it looks like maybe a circus or a carnival of some kind and we see that it did like ruin a lot of people's day because now we have all the kids at the cul-de-sac suddenly coming for Ed and Eddie's blood. So now they have to come up with a plan to leave the cul-de-sac, but they don't know where exactly to go. Eddie suggests maybe they should go meet his brother who lives just outside of town and who lives in the trailer and they can stay with him till they can figure out what's going on. And that's pretty much the plot of the story. It's about Eddie, Double D, and Ed all running from the kids at the cul-de-sac because they did something super bad and now they're on their way to Eddie's brothers. That's the journey we're going through. Already it's different compared to what the series has done. The series is, is very episodic, doesn't really follow a main storyline or kind of a going theme. So it's interesting that it starts like this and it just sets the uh, tone for what to expect or what not to expect because the vibe we get from it is very serious very different i'm not saying it's not funny it is but compared to the show it does have a more sinister vibe more of a questioning vibe like you don't know what's actually happening and that's a bit of magic to it you know because the reason that it's so interesting is because we know these characters and we want to see what happens next now I won't spoil the um, overall story, um, you can check it out I think on Amazon Prime. Um, the movie is actually really good, it's really funny. And if you're an Ed and Eddie fan or have at least seen the uh, clips on YouTube or whatever, then I'm sure you'll at least enjoy like the little bits here and there. For our characters let's start with Double D because Debatably, he is our main protagonist in this because we are mainly hearing his thoughts on this. We are mainly talking about Double D. In fact, we open with Double D writing a letter to his parents about why they're running away. Sam, uh, Double D is voiced by Samuel Vincent, who has always voiced Double D and does a very good job in this and in the show itself. And we really get conflict from Double D's character in this, which is something we've seen in the show a lot, but this time you can tell that it's a seriouser tone. Double D feels that it's finally got to a breaking point with him and Eddie specifically, that their friendship is like on the brink of breaking. This, they feel like it's each other's fault that the scam didn't work and that Ed, Double D, even though he's the one trying to make their way to Eddie's brothers, he feels he's taking most of the blame as the only one actually taking this seriously. And they know they messed up, but Double D is taking it physically and verbally harder than the others. He's letting it known what's on his mind. Not that that's been any different for the character in the past, but this is the first time we actually see him resenting Eddie in this situation. As for Eddie, voiced by Tony Sampson, as is in the regular series, he's trying to act like nothing happened. He's trying to act like it wasn't his fault. 
he's trying to act like his usual character. And I think, for the most part, it's an act. And I think all of us can really see the character starting to break down halfway through the movie. We see him being unsure for the first time about something. Because if you know Eddie, you know he's very headstrong. He's a very confident character. That's what makes him the leader of these three. But because this something went wrong and that their friendship is in question, he's starting to have these doubts about himself. And you can see that like the first half of the movie going on to the second half that it's really starting to break down and when it came to the ending you really understood Eddie that he's not confident and that it's just him trying to convince himself that he is this movie really did have an arc for Eddie I like to think for Double D and Eddie but Eddie specifically because we can physically see it happening before our eyes we see him becoming a softer character an understanding character a different character than we've seen before. We actually see progression with his character. And as for Ed, voiced by Matt Hill, he's acting like a stopper between the two. He's acting like the peacekeeper trying to keep the three together. He is aware that things are bad. He's aware that the, there's tension in the room. And he's the one trying to calm it. He doesn't have much of a story, but that's because he doesn't need to have much of a story. He knows his place in this situation, and it's not being at the front, it's being in between the two of them, trying to make it make sense and trying to make it lighter than it is. The rest of the kids do have their stories. We have the Kanker sisters, we have um, Naz and um, Kevin, we do have all of them, but their storylines are mostly changing, chasing after the Eds more than anything else. So they really don't have much of a plot point to them. That's why I chose to only focus on these three. Because this movie, even though I gave it such a simplistic plot summary, is character driven. It's driven by Eddie, Double D, and Ed. And their conflict and their debates and what they want and what they have. And that's really the charm of the movie. And that's where the comedy comes from. And that's something we never really got with the series. That's what makes it kind of interesting. The animation is very smooth. When it has to go slapstick, it does go slapstick. You can tell that it's um, done using a computer, mostly. But you get, it's still trying to keep that vibe of trying to be hand-drawn. As the creators of the original series have said, they always wanted to keep that look and feel that the animation was always moving somebody was always like happening there wasn't a moment where the characters were just standing still that was their fear of creating the series so you could tell that really leaked into the movie because they kept the same vibe the same characters and they kept the same art style and it didn't really wear off or hurt the eyes it kept its pace going it kept the slapstick and when it had to get serious it kept the mellow tone the darker tone and it really showed off more than the cul-de-sac because this is one of the first times besides the last season that we see Ed and Eddie leave the cul-de-sac and go somewhere else and this is what I think really made them we thrive it's the first time we see them actually react to something outside of their houses outside of their neighborhood and outside of the school and it was interesting and you can see that the artist really took advantage of that opportunity with this animation style. Because this was the last of an installment of the series, there were going to be plenty of references made, but it wasn't too much, you know, it was tastefully done. We get foreseeable references in there like Eddie's brother's room uh, being shown and even them stealing Eddie's brother's car along with mentioning several stuff in it. But we did get some unexpected references throughout. Like in um, On the Wall, while the Eds are running from the angry kids of the uh, cul-de-sac, we see pictures and we see a, a man that kind of looks like Eddie, and he's a salesman. And it's always been suggested by the fan base that that might be his dad, because in this episode, Ed, Ed, in a way, Eddie always talks about how his dad was a salesman and wants to be like him. We do get various other references like Eddie's brother being a jokester, often talking about the stink bomb, 
Eddie's Brothers Hot Sauce, the treasure map, and even the um, Halloween episode, Buah Ha so, And um, that's pretty funny to add in there because that was his main thing, being a jokester. And already with those, we kind of like take a guess that Eddie's brother wasn't really a great guy to begin with, especially towards Eddie. And then we get unexpected references, like when Eddie shocks Ed with a stun gun, and Ed cha- changes into different versions of Ed, like a fish Ed, classic cartoon Ed, Peach Creek Cobbler, you know, stuff throughout the Ed and Eddie story. That's as far as I could tell on my end. Um, if you have some more that I probably overlooked or just didn't notice, please leave it down in the comments. I would like to hear more about the hidden references or even the blatant references I probably just didn't mention here. Because I do love the movie and I would like to know more about it. Overall, this movie is a good movie. But for an Ed and Ace fan, it is a great ending because this is the last Ed and Eddie project they worked on. It was a series finale overall and it really did feel like it because it ended with a kind heartedness. It ended with them making up and it ended with kind of closure for Eddie especially. It ended with a bit of a sweeter vibe than you would expect from an Ed and Eddie cartoon. And the animation, top notch, it really did its job while keeping to the aesthetic that they have had for ever and a half since starting the show. The actors all brought their A-game, allowed them to have different um, moments of anger, sadness, and really brought out the characters, making them not cartoon characters, but made them feel like real people, which is something that is very hard to do, especially with a series that relies on comedy more than story driven storytelling I guess you could say <laughs> and they just brought it home with all that and gave a good send off to the characters which they portrayed and you could tell that there was some care to take in this that there was an effort to please not just the fans but the writers the animators themselves to say that yes this is where we'll stop this is the good ending. And even hints at something more later on, which I highly doubt we'll get, but we're always hopeful. I would like to see more Ed and Eddie stuff. Maybe not a series or maybe a special, maybe a movie. Maybe even them just making an appearance in another project. Because I am a fan of Ed and Eddie. I've watched it since I was little. And I can't deny that there is a charm to it that only really Ed and Eddie fans can get from it, you know? that it's a sense of closure for the fans more than anything else. It does have this indie film vibe that I think a lot of people really enjoy. Because like if you took away the Ed and Eddie aesthetic, it gives you a very independent vibe in this situation. Like it is a coming of age story in a way for these characters, allowing them to grow and to get past traumas and to rely on each other more than they thought they needed to. This is, by all accounts suggested, a coming of age story for Double D and Eddie more than Ed. And there's something to that. And it's a good ending because it shows that they're growing even after the show is gone. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, episode. I know I probably went on and on this last bit, but Um, If you liked it, please leave a comment or like it and and subscribe. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe. I would really like to see my numbers go up a little bit. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and see you later. Have a great one.